Welcome back to Educator.com's SAT preparation course. This lesson is on sentence completion questions, and specifically on sentence completion question types. Let's get started. All right, we begin as always with a brief lesson overview. We're going to ask what are sentence completion questions? Then we're going to look at question types. We're going to look at single blank versus double blank questions, vocabulary and context questions, and logic-based questions. And we're going to uh, do each one of those questions and how to tackle them. We're going to look at strategies. Pick a word and a word, <clears throat> positives and negatives, process of elimination, and we're going to conclude with sentence completion tips. All right, to begin with, what are sentence completion questions? Well, these are questions that ask you to choose the correct word or words to fill in a blank or blanks in a sentence. The sentence has pieces missing and you have to figure out what goes in the hole. They are tests of your vocabulary because, of course, the words they're going to choose are a little bit on the fancy side, a little bit on the high vocabulary side. But they are also tests of your ability to reason. You have to choose the word that makes the most sense. It's not enough just to know what the words mean. You have to be able to read the context of the sentence and make sure your word makes sense for it. These questions usually appear at the beginning of a critical reading section. All right, sentence completion questions may have either one or two blanks, and you approach them differently according to whether they have one or two blanks. Now, there are two kinds of sentence completion questions. Vocabulary and context questions ask you to choose the correct word for the context of the sentence. These questions derive their difficulty from their vocabulary. If you know what the words mean, these questions are easy. Logic-based questions are a little bit more complicated. They ask you to find the correct word or words in the context of a complicated, and therefore logically complex, sentence. These questions derive their difficulty from the twists and turns of their logic. So you may have a sentence that means one thing at the start and then reverses itself halfway through. You have to choose the right word for the blank or blanks, even though it's taking all these twists and turns. So here, you don't just need to know what the words mean, you need to know where they belong. And that takes logic. All right, let's look at a sample vocabulary and context question. These questions all come in one and two blank forms. Our example for this lesson, Dolphins are often reported behaving blank, guiding ships into harbor and pushing lost swimmers back to land. And our choices are enigmatically, benevolently, aggressively, beneficially, or offensively. All right, here's a two blank vocabulary and context question. Both blank and blank, Hoban said very little but was always generous with his money. So we have to choose the pair of words that go in the blanks here. Loquacious and miserly. Was he gregarious and munificent? Was he taciturn and ambivalent, frugal and reticent, or laconic and magnanimous? All right, now let's look at the logic-based questions. These questions still rely on your vocabulary, but they also try to trick you with complicated sentence constructions. The meaning of the sentence changes frequently. You must know where you are to choose the right word. Our example uh, question for this lesson is, after observing several surgically precise wolf hunts, Farley Mowat had to revise his earlier belief that the animals were careless, blank killers of caribou. And our choices are wanton, strategic, ineffective, cooperative, and improbable. All right, so now let's look at a few strategies for tackling these questions. The first one I like to call pick a word, any word. Now, this is a fun little trick. Before you look at the answer choices, before you look at any of the words you're being offered, ask yourself what kind of word might go in the blank. If you could pick any word in the English language that could go in that blank, what word would it be? Even if it's a basic word, even if it's a really simple word, even if it's a stupid word. Pick the word that makes the most sense to you to go in the blank. Then look at the list and see if you can find one that matches or means about the same thing as the word you chose. So let's look at our dolphin question. Dolphins are often reported behaving blank, guiding ships into harbor and pushing lost swimmers back to land. Well, if they're guiding ships into harbor, and pushing lost swimmers back to land, those are very helpful things for dolphins to be doing. So you probably want a word that means something like helpful. So as we look at these words, enigmatically, benevolently, aggressively, beneficially, and offensively, we can start to use a uh, process of elimination to eliminate words that don't mean something like helpful. All right. Our next strategy I call positives and negatives. Sometimes even if you don't know exactly what a word means, and particularly with two blank questions, this is a helpful strategy. On two blank questions, use plus and minus symbols to indicate whether the word in each blank should be positive or negative. 
This is like pick a word, any word, but it's for two blank questions, and it's even more basic. Just tell me whether you want a positive or a negative word in the blank. So, let's look at our sentence about Hoban. He is both something and something. He says very little, which is usually a negative kind of trait, so we have a minus there. But he's generous with his money. That's usually considered a positive trait, so we have a plus there. So we can eliminate any choice that isn't negative followed by positive. All right. Our final strategy is called process of elimination, which I'm sure you've used on a billion standardized tests. Use any method you can to eliminate answers you know are wrong. This is the interesting thing about the SAT. Because they take an extra quarter of a point for a wrong answer, beyond what they would take off if you just didn't answer the question, it's not a good idea to just guess randomly from among five answers. But if you can eliminate at least two answers from a five option question, all of a sudden the odds are in your favor even if you guess randomly from the remaining three. Of course, the more options you eliminate, the better your odds and the more likely you are to get it right and actually get the point. But if you can eliminate at least two answers, it's worth your time to guess. So let's look at our dolphin question and find the answer this time. Dolphins are often reported behaving blank, guiding ships into harbor and pushing lost swimmers back to land. Well, we can cross out enigmatically because that means mysteriously. That doesn't mean anything like helpfully. Benevolently, however, does mean something like helpfully. It means having goodwill or trying to do good things for people. That sounds a bit like what the dolphins are doing. Aggressively, however, it, well, aggressive means hostile. And that's not really what they were doing. Similarly, we can eliminate offensively because if the dolphins were trying to be offensive, they would be pushing lost swimmers out to sea. Which, granted, for all we know they're doing, but we don't know they're doing that, and certainly not in this sentence, so we can eliminate offensively. So that leaves us with benevolently and beneficially to choose from. Now at this point, you could just flip a mental coin, or you could look more closely at what these two words mean. Very often, when you get down to the last two answer choices on the SAT, there will be one that is almost right, and one that's really right. Never let the good be the enemy of the best. So we have a choice between benevolently and beneficially. And here is the trick. Beneficial does mean helpful, but usually if something is beneficial, it's beneficial just by virtue of what it is, not what it does. A medicine is beneficial if you're sick. But usually if something is making a choice to help you, like a person or an animal, that is benevolent. Because the vole root has to do with will and decision in Latin. So if someone is benevolent, they are deliberately choosing to do things to help you. So benevolently is our best answer under these circumstances, and indeed, the answer to the question is B. All right, here's another tip. Look for clue words in your sentences. Let's look at Farley Mowat here. After observing several surgically precise wolf hunts, Farley Mowat had to revise his earlier belief that the animals were careless, blank killers of caribou. Now, this describes uh, somebody changing his mind about something. His original belief was that wolves were careless. So if we go back and look at the original answer choices, go back in the video if you need to, you'll find that uh, there's only one word on the list that really means about the same thing as careless. And that word is wanton. It means reckless and wasteful, both of which connect to careless. Surgically precise would go with strategically and a couple of other words on the list, but remember, he revised his opinion. He observed these surgically precise attacks, and because of that, he revised his opinion. This blank is about his original opinion, so we want a word that matches our clue word, careless, so our choice is A, wanton. All right, now on two blank questions, look for the relationship between the two words and the sequence of the blanks. Now we got the sequence kind of down with the whole positive negative thing, but look at the relationship between the words. Hoban said very little, but was always generous with his money. Once again, we have a negative followed by a positive, and that word but is important. We want two contrasting qualities. We want uh, qualities that really stand out from each other. So let's look at our choices. Loquacious and miserly. Well, we want a negative-positive combination, and loquacious and miserly is a positive-negative. Loquacious means very, very talkative. Miserly means very, very stingy, which, by the way, is the opposite of generous. So we can eliminate A as a choice. Gregarious and munificent. Well, gregarious means very friendly, hanging around with lots of people, you know, very buddy-buddy with people. That's a positive, so we're already we're in trouble. Munificent does mean generous, but gregarious does not mean anything like not talking very much, so we can eliminate B. Now we have taciturn and ambivalent. Now taciturn actually does mean saying very little, not inclined to talk very much, and it is kind of a negative quality, so we're in good shape so far, but 
Ambivalent kind of means feeling two ways about something in the middle, not quite sure. That's nothing like being generous, so we can eliminate C. Frugal and reticent. Well, frugal is usually considered a positive thing, and it also means really tight with your money, which is the opposite of generous, and it's also in the wrong place. Reticent is another negative, so here we have the sequence reversed. We're supposed to have negative positive, and this is a positive negative. So we can eliminate D, and that leaves us, by process of elimination, with E. Laconic and magnanimous, and indeed, laconic means saying very little, and magnanimous means generous, especially with money. All right, our final round of sentence completion tips. First and foremost, never eliminate a choice unless you are sure of its meaning. If you don't know what the word means, don't cross it off unless you have some other way of eliminating the choice. If you have a two blank question and you know based on one of the words that it cannot possibly be the right answer, go ahead and eliminate it even if you don't know what the other word means. But if you have no clue what that answer means, leave it. Just leave it. It might be the right answer. Secondly, use your knowledge of roots, prefixes, and suffixes to decode unfamiliar words. See if the word you're looking at has any resemblance to a word you already know. You can actually get pretty far this way. Words in English live in families, and you can very often figure out what a word means by finding words that it resembles. However, watch for prefixes like anti or a or non or something like that, which indicates that it actually means the opposite of the word you know. Third, if you can't eliminate any of the answer choices, skip the question. The odds are not in your favor. If you have no clue what you're doing, skip the question. You can afford to leave one question behind. If you can only eliminate one answer choice, move on, come back later and see if you can eliminate at least one more. If you can only eliminate one, it's worth coming back later, but don't fill it in now. Now, as I've said before, if you can eliminate at least two choices, two is the magic number, feel free to guess, but the more choices you eliminate, the better your odds will be. Finally, and most importantly for sentence completion questions, read. Read, 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 read. Your teachers tell you, your parents tell you, everyone you know tells you to read. They are all right. Read. The more you read, the more you will build your vocabulary and the easier these questions will be. You'll have a better sense of context and a better sense of what the words mean. So when in doubt, read a book. And that's all for this lesson. Thank you for watching. Educator.com.